Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my March budget for 2022. Um, I already have my monthly spread laid out here, so let's take a look at that. I use a Golden Coil Planner. Golden Coil Planner, geez, that's hard to say today. Um, for my daily life, and one of the customizations I made to my planner was to have a second um, monthly calendar, which is just for my finances. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, everything in purple are bills, really nothing um, too new there. The only thing I just got an email today actually about Amazon raising its price for Prime. So um, it said that it'll go up about $2. So we'll see what that actually flushes out to be and then I can better plan for future months. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention here is in yellow, I give myself a weekly allowance and also a weekly grocery budget. It just really helps me stay on track um, when I budget, you know, $500 for the month. That helps me break it down to know that I'm like staying on, you know, par for the course and everything like that. So pretty straightforward. Um, I did make a little bit of a list over here of reminders for myself. So the first thing is my Discover Cashback card has a quarterly 5% cashback category. Um, so this first quarter, it's grocery store. So I just make a note that anytime I go grocery shopping, I should try to use my Discover card to get 5% cashback instead of the normal 1%. Um, also, I am a Verizon customer for my cell phone plan, and they offer $3 gift cards every month. Um, and I've been doing this for a while, but I kind of forget to do it sometimes. So I'm just going to start leaving that note. I personally get Starbucks gift cards and then I load them into my Starbucks app. Um, I don't actually have a Starbucks where I live, but anytime I go to like the next town over or like the next biggest town to do, maybe like a bulk grocery shop or something like that, I always stop at Starbucks. So it's nice to have, um, some money on my account so that I don't have to pay for it out of pocket. Okay. Next File property taxes. Um, I live in Minnesota and they offer a property tax refund um, if you qualify, which I should qualify this year, um, but you cannot file this until March 15th. It's a little bit different than like state and federal um, taxes. So just have a note here to remind me to do that. And then also the Amazon Prime note, my email said it's gonna go from $12.99 to $14.99 a month, but we'll see um, how that actually shapes out with taxes and everything. Other than that, pretty um, easy month, nothing nothing too crazy here. Um, so let me pull out my actual budget sheet and we'll go through all the numbers and what I'm planning for the month. Okay, so this is my um, budgeting sheet. I do budget on a spreadsheet first and then I share it in videos on this paper form and I like to just write it out too. It's, I don't know, like just feels official when it's on paper. So um, my income that I'm budgeting off of, 43.8180. This is just from my um, W-2 salary money for my job. Um, I typically do get some extra money throughout the month, whether it be like interest or um, my boyfriend helps pay for some expenses, but I just like to budget off of my salary because that's what I know I can count on. Um, and all the other stuff is just kind of extra. Also, I am a month ahead. So my two checks from February are what I'm going to use in April, or I'm sorry, in March. And then March's checks will be used in April, that kind of thing. Um, it just makes me, I don't know, more comfortable to have all the money I need for the month ready to go on the first of the month. That's what I prefer to do. So anyway, let's dive in to the actual um, sections here. The first are the expenses. So my mortgage, $1,011.86 per usual. I own a townhouse um, outside of the Minneapolis area. HOA is actually up this month. I was late to paying it last month, so I have a $25 addition here for a late fee, which, you know, is really a bummer. I haven't had a late fee on my HOA for like four years, so I'm not going to beat myself up about it. It is what it is. Um, I will be better about scheduling that payment going forward. Okay, insurance, $171.94. Uh, this is for my car insurance, my homeowner's insurance, and I have an umbrella policy. Um, so I just roll them all up here for one line item. Utilities, $159.53. 
I'm also kind of like a month ahead on my utilities. So I have a set fund with $300 in it. I let my utilities come out. And then this $159.53 is actually what came out in February. So this is what I need to refill this account up for for um, March so that I'm at the top and ready for my bills to come out. Next is my phone. Um, like I said before, I'm a Verizon customer. 8412 is what the bill says. So that's what I'm going to budget. Um, and then my subscriptions, I have Amazon Prime, of course. I have Paramount for just a couple of months. I'm going to do Paramount because I want to watch 1883. Um, and then what else do I have? Oh, Netflix and Spotify. So this total I'm going to estimate is $46.74. That's adding $2.00. But like I said, with the Amazon thing, we'll just see if my tax changes for all that calculation. So this might be a little off this month, but close enough. Um, this is something that my boyfriend does split with me. But again, I just budget all of these bills that are in my name out of my you know, income. And then he pays me at the end of the month. We split some things and this is one of them. Groceries is another thing that him and I split. And this month I'm doing $450. I give myself $100 per Monday. But the first of March is a Tuesday, so I'm going to give myself an extra 50 for that week because it is, you know, pretty long stretch there. Um, but that's going to be what I'm budgeting. I know that grocery prices are kind of crazy right now and stock is crazy. My grocery store in particular has been out of like what I would consider staple items for months. It's like very bare bones. So, you know, it is what it is. We're doing the best we can. I'm certainly um, trying to make like bigger meals like casseroles or chili or something in a crock pot that can last a few days with leftovers. And that's been helping keep my grocery cost down a little bit more. Gas, I always budget $60 a month. I work from home and I live in a small town. So even if I'm going to go to like the bank or the um, liquor store or the grocery store, P.O. box, whatever. Um, it's very small town. So I don't do a lot of driving, but I like to just budget that 60 and I fill up my um, tank all the way at the beginning of every month. And then anytime I go below half the tank, I refill it, but it's not very often that that happens. And lastly is spending money. So I give myself $500 a month for personal spending. I use most of this to eat out, to be honest. But if I wanted to buy like new clothes, new shoes, it comes out of the spending money. If I want to go to like a movie or a concert, it comes out of the spending money. I used to have different categories for all these items that go into spending. And it was like too complex and too much for me to track. So I just lumped it all together and that makes my brain happy. So my total for the expense section $2,772.34, which gives me a remaining amount of $1,609.46. I am a zero-based budgeter, so all of this money in the green here is going to be allocated in the next couple of sections. I like to have every cent, have a job, ready to go. So on the first of the month, I know exactly what I need to do. So now we have the funds section. These are going to be the equivalent of like sinking funds and cash envelopes. If you're familiar with seeing those types of things on other budget channels. I personally don't use cash. I just don't like it. So these are all digital sinking funds and stuff like that. Um, and I do have a video of how I manage these. I can link if you're interested. So the first one is annual, $120 this month. Um, this is kind of the normal amount. The first couple months of the year, I like to add a little bit more um, just to bulk it up. But 120 is the normal. And this helps me pay for like annual expenses such as my car registration tabs. Um, I have a home warranty that comes up once a year my workout app that I use, just like a variety of things like that. Um, so that is the annual. Miko is my cat. He gets $40 a month for his supplies. And then whatever I don't use just builds on itself and it helps me pay for his annual vet visit. So that's how I handle him. Um, but I'm currently stocked up. I know pet food has been kind of hit and miss to find too. So I have a few months worth of food. But, um, you know, just kind of keeping an eye on the shelves that they start to get sparse again. I might pick up a few extra cans of this wet food or something like that. Incidental is $50 a month. This is my cushion fund. So if my bills, for example, if my Amazon is higher than what I thought it would be, I can use some of this money to help cover the cost of that. Um, usually something comes up every month <laughs> that I don't plan for, and this helps me combat that. Um, same idea, though, with 
the rest of these that if I don't use it all, I just add it to the account and let it build itself up into, you know, helping myself in the future. Okay, vacation, $250 this month. Uh, that's kind of what I am budgeting for the whole year is $250 a month. We don't have any major plans right now, um, but we are working on some things for later this year. So um, I'm sure this will get used and I'm just happy to put the money aside for now. Beauty gets $50 a month. This pays for all of my beauty products, you know, skincare, makeup, whatever. Um, I am doing a low buy series for the beauty category if you are interested in things like that. Um, but that's going to be kind of the standard. Car also gets $50. This is a new fund for 2022, but it was just time for me to have some money aside for things like tires or windshield wipers or oil changes, just those regular car maintenance items. Gifts gets $80 this month. I am fortunate that most of my gifts that I give throughout the year don't start until June. So I have the first five months of the year to bulk this um, fund up. But then um, June, I have two gifts that I typically give there for Father's Day and also my dad's birthday falls in June. And then August is heavy, my boyfriend's birthday and one of my friends, good friend's birthdays in August. September, I have birthdays and then we're into Christmas. So yeah, just the second half of the year is a little bit heavier than the first half, so I'm happy to just let that money sit and grow. Opportunity, $20 a month. This is my like giving fund. Um, I typically like to have this to the side. I don't use it every month, but um, for example, around the Christmas season, we gave out cards with cash in it to some of our local like bartenders and servers that have taken really good care of us throughout the year and I came from here but I also plan to use this when like the local school does fundraisers or like Girl Scout cookie season I can you know kind of um, participate a little bit there so that's what that's for home $50 for all home products you know paper products um, if we need like I don't know lighters for our candles or candles or whatever it all comes out of home and the last one here is the emergency fund. So if you're not familiar right now, I am working on building my emergency fund up. So what I've already done in my spreadsheet is I plugged in all these numbers plus the numbers that are going to come after this and every extra penny I have is going to my emergency fund right now. Um, so that's how I already know the number that I'm going to write here. And this month I should be able to put $774.46 towards my emergency fund which is absolutely bananas to me that I'm able to put this much money to savings, um, especially for my emergency fund. But since I paid off all of my consumer debt, it's so much easier. And I actually just posted a video of what my emergency fund budget is. Um, so you can go check that out if you are interested. I think that was kind of a fun video to go through and hopefully it gives you some ideas, but that is the priority. So this total for the funds section is $14.84.46, which is going to give me a remaining of $125. So the last section I have here is investing. So I have a taxable betterment account that I put $25 in every month. And then currently I'm putting $100 in my Roth IRA. And this is that last $125. Um, so that'll bring my budget down to zero. But I do have other retirement, um, you know, like 401k and HSA and other things happening. But those come out of my check before it's deposited in my bank. So I don't include that on my budget here. Uh, lastly, I do have this cash flow section. I don't plan to cash flow anything this month, but I like to have just a line or two here in case something comes up. But I'm not planning for any cash flow um, situations to occur. At the very bottom here, I've been liking to write what my priorities are. So if I have extra money, where am I going to send it? And for me right now, it's building that emergency fund up to three months of expenses. I should be able to achieve this by the end of June, but I would love to get that sooner if possible. So that is going to be the number one priority. If I have extra money in different categories, like if my groceries are under budget, it can go to the emergency fund. So that is my budget for March 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you have coming up in March, any exciting 
things coming up that you are planning for, I'd love to hear about it down below in the comment section. But that is it for me today, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.